Hi everybody, and welcome to another episode of 10 Minute Tips with me, Micah Hoffman from the OSINT Curious Project. Right now we're going to look at a way of automating viewing a bunch of different websites. Now, when we are doing our open source intelligence, many times we will have a list of URLs. Maybe you've done some username enumeration and you need to visit instagram.com slash username, twitter.com slash username, facebook.com slash username. And you could do it in a browser. It might take a long time depending on how many URLs you have. So what we can do is use some pretty cool tools that are out there and free to do this work for us in a rapid fashion. Today I want to introduce you to a really, really great tool that I love. It's called Eyewitness, and it's made by a man named Chris Truncher. Chris has been contributing to the cybersecurity community for many, many years as a terrific person. He has his repository here on GitHub at 40 North Security slash Eyewitness. Now, I've already gone ahead and taken this content here, downloaded it to my computer, <clears throat> and installed it. Whoa. <clears throat> I always get choked up when I deal with eyewitness. Uh, so if you've never done this before, I'm going to do another session on how to go ahead and download and get stuff from Git. Uh, but in essentially, if we scroll down here on the page, uh, usually the authors will show you how to actually uh, install their tool. Here, set up, navigate to the setup directory, and run the setup.sh script. All right, it's pretty... Um, pretty uh, high level there. I've gone ahead and done this for us. And then what we can do is specify a file name with URLs in it and for his tool to go out and visit it from the web. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Um, like I said, I've already done the work here. This is what eyewitness looks like <clears throat> in the terminal. And I have a file called URLs with HTTPS, OSINT Curious, uh, DuckDuckGo, and OSINTFramework.com, just as test sites for us to run through. So let's say that you had twitter.com slash whatever, instagram.com slash whatever. You just put them in a file, and then we point eyewitness to it. So the way we do it is we do eyewitness. We have to tell it that we want it to do web searches and that we have a certain file. Now, in my case, I have that URL file. You have a lot of other options to use. We can switch user agents using eyewitness so that eyewitness will check out the website and see if it changes via uh, an iPhone or mobile device versus something that's a desktop or a Google bot. Uh, there's also other things for increasing the amount of, of wait time in case you have a site that's really slow or your internet's a little slow. In my case, this worked really, really quickly with these three sites and eyewitness has completed. You can see on the screen right here, it says done, report written to this location, and eyewitness saves it in the current directory by default, uh, and it specifies it month, day, year, and then the time in hours, minutes, seconds when you ran the report. So if I reran this report in another second, or five seconds or a minute, it'll have a different location on the, the file system, and you can go ahead and compare the two reports. Now, I always like to do the yes here. So I'm going to say, yes, I do want to open the report. And what the tool will do is open the report in Firefox or your default browser, which in my case is Firefox. Now, for our purposes, we're going to go ahead and take a look at what was retrieved. Here is a picture of what DuckDuckGo looked like when the eyewitness script went out and looked at it. And over here on the left-hand side, we see the request for, for DuckDuckGo.com, which was at this IP address. And then this content here on the left, that's all header information that gets sent to and from the server with the request. So if there's any cookies that are set here, if there are other things like content security policies or CSPs or cross-site scripting protection, you'll see that. Here's OSINT Framework. Now, OSINT Framework, there's JavaScript down here that didn't show up because Eyewitness doesn't necessarily execute that JavaScript, but we can see a little bit about what the page would look like. Here again, we have the header information. Now, for the OSINT Curious, we need to go to page two. And here we have the OSINT Curious website, and here's the request. And you can see that 
we do have that header information. Well, that's pretty cool. And since we have a bunch of time left, I'm hoping you're okay with going back to a previous 10 minute tip. We actually did something in another 10 minute tip with DNS Twister. This is that tool or that website that you can use to look for typo squatting domains. So if I have google.com is my target domain, what DNS Twister will do is it will look for goggle.com and Google with three O's and a whole bunch of different variations to see who has gone ahead and registered those other domains. Now, sometimes those domains are actually malicious. Maybe they're trying to trick people and sometimes they're not. Well, if we look here, I've run this on sans.org, the SANS Institute's website or domain. And we see that we have a whole bunch of entries that have come back, SANS A, SANS C, SANS E. And then even down here, we have SAJS.org, SAFS. And each one of these could be a phishing site, somebody that's setting it up to try to trick SANS's users. Well, let's go ahead and export this, which we didn't do in the last video. We're gonna export this to CSV. Now, you can do this two ways. Um, in this case, I have Ubuntu, and I can open this directly in LibreOffice Calc, then strip out the, the column with the URLs that I want. I'm gonna go ahead and do some command line Kung Fu and save this file. So let's, uh, let's leave that eyewitness directory here. We're gonna open a new tab. I'm gonna CD over to downloads. Here's that DNS Twister report. I'm just gonna look at the head of it. And so it's in this format right here sans.org the original sans.org edition sansa.org and what we can see is any ones that didn't resolve that weren't actually a, a valid domain or didn't have a, a, a ip address associated with them have this false false so let's go ahead and do a grep minus v say find all the records that do not have false false from that file there we go all right so let's take it one step further. Let's use our friend cut to cut out just one column worth of information. We only want this column right here. That is the, let's see, one, two, three, the third column in this thing. So let's take this, pipe that to cut field three, tell it a delimiter of comma, and there we have our domains that we can test. Now we need to take these domains and put them into our uh, a file. So let's go ahead and output them to, oh, we'll just leave them here, sans URLs. Now it's very important to remove any other crud in here, like tweak, that's not gonna work. Let's see if all of these are actual domains. Da -da. Yep, they are. So save that. All right. So now we have in the downloads folder, sans URLs. Let's go back over here. We're just gonna up arrow. And instead of F colon, we're gonna do downloads, sans URLs, and tell it to go. Now there's 60 hosts here. Um, Eyewitness, like I said, has a bunch of different options for choosing how many threads you can uh, request or how many processes you can request at the same time. Also with things like timeouts, we can increase that from the default uh, or decrease it as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the magic of, of uh, video editing here to speed this part up. And now we finished. That took about two minutes. Let's go ahead and check out the report. Now this is gonna be a pretty long report because we've got about 60 hosts. Again, if I wanted to fix some of these issues that I had here where uh, we hit these timeout limits, then I can do an eyewitness. And if you see this, there's number of threads, there's increasing the timeouts. The timeout right now is set to seven seconds, which is not a lot of time, especially with a slow website. But let's take a look at some of these. Now, here's service unavailable on sand.org. Here's 
s.ans.org. Now, if some of you are going to be concerned that we're hacking or whatever, we're not. We're visiting these websites with a script instead of a web browser. So there's no hacking that's going on here. This is all totally legit. Here we have ANS, Sansa, and you can see that it's so much easier for me to just scroll down this page and look at these screenshots and look at the cookies and other things over here than to go ahead and visit each one of these in uh, in a web browser. Now, some of these are, are the, the screenshots are gonna look something like this. We can click on them and zoom in to see all of the kind of content that's on the website. Well, that's all the time I have today. So I'd like to say thanks for watching. I'm Michael Hoffman. Stay OSINT Curious.